What is the format of sales book? Date, outward invoice number, name of the customers. So when furniture is purchased from Nitya, what is the journal entry? Furniture account data to Nitya's account. Here they have given certain transaction where we have to record those transaction in purchase book as well as purchase returns book. These are the few transaction but make sure that we have to calculate in each and every transaction then we have to record in the respective subsidiary books. Hello everyone, I am Harshita, lecturer, Department of Commerce, Vidyashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence, Mysore. My dear students, today we are in the third session of Unit 3 of the subject Fundamentals of Business Accounting and this is for first sem BBA students. So your Unit 3 is all about subsidiary books. So already we have discussed few of the subsidiary books. So let us quickly recall what we have discussed in a previous session. So in a previous session, we have discussed two important subsidiary books that is sales book as well as sales returns book. So we have seen what is the meaning of these two books and what is the format as well as we had solved few simple problem on sales book as well as sales returns book. In today's session, we shall continue with few more problems. So go through the problem here where we have to combinedly prepare all the subsidiary books. Now go through the problem here. Enter the following transactions in the proper subsidiary books. So these are the transactions. First, we shall identify where these transactions has to be recorded. Whether it has to be recorded in the purchase book or sales book or purchase return, sales return or in the journal prop. Now moving on to the first transaction, goods sold to Anjali. So where do we record? We'll record in the sales book because it is a goods sold on credit basis to Anjali. Next one purchase from Arjun traders. So we'll record in purchases book. Sold goods to Maneta traders. We'll record in sales book. So the next transaction is August 7th. Anjali returned goods. So if you see the transactions earlier with Anjali. So we had sold goods to Anjali. Now she has returned goods as back. So what does it mean? It is sales return. Next, return to Arjun traders. So we had already purchased from Arjun. Now we are returning it back. So it is purchase return. Purchase goods from Gagan traders, rupees 4,800, less 10% discount. So where do we record? Purchases book. But make sure that you will less that discount. Sold to Sai brothers, 8,000 less trade discount. So we will record in the sales book. But make sure that we have to minus that trade discount. Next is returned outward. So what do you mean by that? Returned outward to Gagan traders rupees 4000 less 5% discount. Returned outward means what? That is we have purchased. So if you see the transaction with Gagan, we have purchased from him. Now we are returning him back. So it's purchase return. Return outward. Next one is bought from Neetu. Bought in the sense we have purchased. So we will record in the purchase book. Next, furniture purchase from Nitya. Now, whether we have to record the transaction in any of the subsidiary books, that is purchase, sales, purchase return or sales return, no. It comes under journal proper because they have purchased a fixed asset. Fixed asset is what? Furniture. So, furniture is been purchased. So, where do we record? We will record in the journal proper. Next, Sai Brothers returned goods. So, what we have done with Sai Brothers earlier? So, we had sold goods to Sai Brothers. Now, they are returning us back. So, what does it mean? It is sales return. Next is sold to Murali. So, we have sold goods to Murali. So, we will record in the sales book. Next transaction is Murali returned goods. We had already sold to him. Now, he is returning the goods back. So, we will record in sales returns. Okay, so these are the transactions we have to record in respective subsidiary books. First, we shall prepare purchases book. As you all know, write the heading purchases book. You know the format. So, what is the format? Date, inward invoice number, name of the supplier, ledger folio as well as amount. So, this will be the format. Okay, now we shall take only the transaction of purchases. Then we shall record in purchases book. Now go through the problem which are the transactions relating to purchase. 
Yes, second transaction that is August 4th. Purchase from Arjun Traders rupees 1950. So, how do we write? Write the date first. So, it is August 4th. There is no inward invoice number. So, let it be blank. Name of the supplier. So, who is the supplier? Arjun Traders. So, write the name of the supplier. Arjun Traders. And what is the amount? So, amount is 1950. So, write that amount 1950. In the same way, we will record each and every transactions relating to purchase. Now moving on to the next one, which is the next transaction relating to purchase here. That is August 12th. Purchase goods from Gagan Traders. So name of the supplier is Gagan Traders. 4,800, but there is a trade discount of 10%. So we have to minus that trade discount. So how do we write? Write the date first, August 12th. There is no inward invoice number. And what is the name of the supplier? Gagan Traders. And what is the amount? So they have given 4,800, but there is a trade discount of 480. So 4,800 minus 10%, so we'll get 4,320. So that is a trade discount. Next one is, after this, which is other transactions to be recorded in purchase book, that is August 24th. Bought goods from Neetu 660. So how do we write? That is August 24th. There is no inward invoice number. Name of the supplier is Neetu. So write the name of the supplier. And what is the amount? 660. So see any other transaction that comes under purchase book. No other transaction. So we have to total. When you total all the amount, you will get 6930. So what is this? Balance of purchases book. Next, we shall prepare the next subsidiary book that is purchase returns book. Now, we have to go through each and every transaction and see where there is purchase returns entry. So, go through the problem. So, where there is purchase return book here yeah, that is August 8th. So, how do you write? So, what is the format of purchase returns book first? Date, debit note number, name of the supplier, ledger folio and amount. So write the date first, that is August 8th and name of the supplier is Arjun Traders. There is no debit note number. So the name of the supplier is Arjun Traders. So no debit note number, name of the supplier is Arjun Traders and what is the amount? That is 450. So write 450. Next one. After that, which is the next transaction to be recorded in purchase returns book. So here there is a purchase return transaction that is August 20th. There is no debit note number in the transaction. So let it be blank. Name of the supplier is Gagan Traders and what is the amount? 4000 but there is a trade discount of 5%. So you have to minus that 5%. So Gagan Traders 4000 that is 4000 into 5% you have to minus this 200. So I'll get 3800. Okay, so no other purchase return transaction. So what you have to do? Total. So total all these. So I'll get 4,250. So what is this? Balance of purchase returns book. Now we shall go through the next subsidiary book. That is sales book. Now what is the format of sales book? Date, outward invoice number, name of the customer. So here remember in purchase book, it is name of the supplier. In sales book, name of the customer ledger folio as well as amount. Now how do I write the transaction? Now go through the entries. Yes. So first entry itself is relating to sales book. Goods sold to Anjali. So how do I write? Write the date. There is no outward invoice number. So let it be blank. Then name of the customer. Name of the customer is Anjali and what is the amount? 1200. So write that. August 1st, there is no outward invoice number. Name of the customer is Anjali. And what is the amount? Amount is 1200. In the same way, next one. So coming to the next transaction relating to sales. So August 6th. So write the date. There is no outward invoice number. Name of the customer is Manyata Traders. And the amount is how much? 2100. So write the date. August 6th. There is no outward invoice number and name of the customer is Manyata Traders. And what is the amount? Amount is 2100. 
In the same way, next transaction. So next transaction relating to sales. Yes, August 15th, sold to Sai Brothers. So name of the customer is Sai Brothers, 8000, but there is a trade discount of 5%. So you have to minus that trade discount. So how do we write? August 15th, there is no outward invoice number. So let it be blank. So August 15th, there is no outward invoice number blank. So Sai Brothers, 8000, but there is a trade discount of 5%. 8000 into 5%. So minus that. So we'll get 7600. Now coming to the next one after August 15th. Next is August 30th, sold to Murali 2900. So they have directly given. So write the date, name of the customer is Murali and what is the amount? 2900. So August 30th, outward invoice number is dash, name of the customer is Murali and what is the amount? 2900. So we are done with all the transactions relating to sales. So what you have to do? You have to add all the amount so that you will get 13,000. 800. So what is this? Balance of sales book. Next subsidiary book is sales returns book. Okay. So here also you have to do the same. So what is the format? Date, credit note number, name of the customer. So after credit note number, it is name of the customer, ledger folio as well as amount. So how do you write the entry here? So first write the date. First we shall see which are the entry that comes under sales returns book. So here there is that is August 7th. So write the date August 7th. Anjali returned goods. In the sense what? It is sales return. So August 7th. There is no credit note number. Name of the customer is Anjali. And what is the amount? So amount is 950. In the same way next transaction relating to sales return. So after that. Yes, here there is sales return that is August 29th, Sai Brothers returned goods 290. So write the date first that is August 29th. There is no credit note number, name of the customer is Sai Brothers and what is the amount? So amount is 290. Next one. So after that we have last transaction that is August 31st, Murali returned goods worth rupees 300. So how do we write in sales returns book? So first write the date, August 31st, there is no credit note number. So Murali, name of the customer and what is the amount? Amount is 300. Now here also we have to total all the amounts so that we will get the balance of sales return book that is 1540. So this is a balance of sales returns book. Next we had left out one transaction that is relating to that is furniture purchase from Nitya. So as I told you, it comes under journal proper. So we have to record that in the journal proper because journal proper is also one of the subsidiary books. So how do you write? So your journal proper will be the same as your journal entry. So write the date August 26, 2019. So when furniture is purchased from Nitya, what is the journal entry? Furniture account data to Nitya's account. So we'll record the same journal entry. Furniture account data to Nitya's account being furniture purchased on credit from Nitya and what is the amount? 5600 in the debit as well as 5600 in the credit. So this is how you are going to record the entry in the journal proper same as your journal entry but you have to include it in the subsidiary book because journal proper is a or journal proper is one of the important subsidiary book. So hope you are clear with this problem where you had prepared all the subsidiary books together that is purchase book, sales book, purchase return as well as sales returns book. Now moving on to the next problem, enter the following transaction in the purchase book as well as purchase returns book. Okay, so here they have given certain transaction where we have to record those transaction in purchase book as well as purchase returns book. Now go through the transaction. That is September 1st, 2018. So purchase the following goods on credit from Radha traders. Now this is a transactions relating to purchase. Okay. Next, second one. September 9th purchase of following goods on credit from Bombay Fashion House. So this also comes under purchase book. Next, 
goods returned to radha traders so goods returned to radha traders in the sense what we had already purchased from radha now we are returning her back so it comes under purchase returns book next september 18th purchase of following goods on credit from jyoti fashions so we'll record in purchase book september 20th purchase of following goods on credit from kaveri traders so purchase book goods returned to bombay fashion house so this is nothing but what purchase return next goods returned to kaveri traders so here also purchase return so these are the few transaction but make sure that we have to calculate in each and every transaction then we have to record in the respective subsidiary books that is purchase book as well as purchase returns book now go through the first transaction that is september 1st 2018 purchase the following goods on credit from radha traders now name of the supplier name of the supplier is radha traders what they have purchased 25 shirts at rupees 300 per shirt so 25 into 300 next 20 pants at rupees 700 per pant so 20 into 700 next there is a trade discount of 10% so you have to minus that trade discount so we shall see how we have to record in our purchase book now first go through the format purchases book or purchases journal so what is the format date invoice invoice number name of the supplier ledger folio as well as amount now write the first date september 1st 2018 whether they have given the invoice invoice number there is no invoice invoice number so let it be blank so name of the supplier so who is the supplier radha traders so write radha traders next you have to multiply 25 into 300 and 20 into 700 so you'll get 7514000 so add both so that you'll get 21500 less trade discount at 10% so that is 21500 into 10% so how much you'll get 2000 150 so 21500 minus 2150 you'll get 19350 hope you are clear with the first transaction now come to the next one that is in purchase book yes september 9th purchase of following goods on credit from bombay fashion house so name of the supplier is bombay fashion house so what you have to do here that is 10 fancy sarees at rupees 500 so 10 into 500 Next one is ten fancy hats at rupees hundred per hat. So ten into hundred. So you have to multiply, and there is a trade discount of five percent where you have to minus that trade discount. So we shall see how we have recorded September nine. There was no invoice invoice number, and the name of the supplier is Bombay Fashion House. Ten into five hundred five thousand. Ten into hundred one thousand. So add both so that you'll get six thousand less trade discount at five percent. That is six thousand into five percent. So you'll get three hundred. So six thousand minus three hundred, you'll get five thousand seven hundred. In the same way, next one. That is, this is under purchase return book. We shall record later. Now coming to the September eighteen. So this we have to record in the purchases book. So purchase of following goods on credit from Jyoti Fashion. So name of the supplier is Jyoti Fashions. Ten jackets at rupees thousand per jacket. So ten into one thousand. Next five plain shirts at rupees two hundred per shirt. So five into two hundred. But there is a trade discount of fifteen percent. So you have to minus that fifteen percent trade discount. So let us see how we have recorded. That is September eighteenth. There is no invoice invoice number. Name of the supplier is Jyoti Fashions. Ten into one thousand, ten thousand. Five into two hundred, one thousand. So if you add both, you'll get eleven thousand. But there is a fifteen percent trade discount. So you are going to calculate trade discount on eleven thousand into fifteen percent. So you'll get one thousand six fifty. So eleven thousand minus one thousand six fifty. You'll get nine thousand three fifty. Now coming to the next one. So next transaction is on September twenty 
yet that is purchase of following goods on credit from kaveri traders now kaveri traders is the name of the supplier so what they have purchased 10 dress material at rupees 2000 per dress material so 10 into 2000 but there is a trade discount of 5% you have to minus that 5% so we shall see how we have recorded that is september 20th so name of the supplier here there is no inward invoice number so let it be dash name of the supplier is kaveri traders 10 into 2000 that is 10 dress material of 2000 each so 10 into 2000 20000 less 5% trade discount that is 20000 into 5% 5% trade discount you'll get 1000 so that is 19000 no other transactions relating to purchase so we have to total all the amount of purchase book so that when you total you'll get 53400 now this is a balance of purchase book or purchase journal now come to the sales or purchase returns book so which are the transactions that has to be recorded in purchase returns book here that is on september 12th goods returned to radha traders so name of the supplier is radha traders and what they have purchased return or what they have returned back three shirts so 3 into 300 3 shirts at rupees 300 per shirt one pant at rupees 700 so 1 into 700 and there is a trade discount of 10% what you have to minus that so purchase returns book so purchase returns book or purchase return journal so what is the format date debit note number name of the supplier ledger folio as well as amount so this will be the format now coming to the first entry under purchase returns book is september 12th and there is no debit note number so it is dash and name of the supplier is radha traders so debit note number is dash radha traders so what they have returned back that is 3 into 300 and 1 into 700 so 3 into 300 900 1 into 700 700 so add both so that you'll get 1600 but there is a trade discount of 10% So one thousand six hundred into ten percent, so you'll get one sixty. So one thousand six hundred minus one sixty, you'll get one thousand four forty. In the same way, next transaction that is September twenty sixth. So September twenty sixth, goods returned to Bombay Fashion House. So here date is September twenty sixth. There is no debit note number. Name of the supplier is Bombay Fashion House. So what they have returned? Two fancy sarees at rupees five hundred. So two into five hundred, and four fancy hat of hundred each. So four into hundred, and there is a trade discount of five percent. So you have to minus that five percent trade discount. So September twenty sixth. There is no debit note number, and name of the supplier is Bombay Fashion House. Two into five hundred, one thousand. Four into hundred. 400 add both so that you'll get 1400 but there is a 5% trade discount that is 1400 into 5% so you'll get 70 so 1400 minus 70 you'll get 1330 next one september 29th goods returned to kaveri traders so name of the supplier is kaveri traders one dress material at rupees 2000 so 1 into 2000 and there is a trade discount of 5% so you have to minus that 5% trade discount so september 29th there is no debit note number and name of the supplier is kaveri traders 1 into 2000 that is 2000 minus trade discount so trade discount how much 100 so 2000 minus 100 you'll get 1900 so any other transactions so no other transactions relating to that is purchase returns so what you have to do you have to add all the amount in the purchase returns column so that you'll get 4670 so what is this so this is a 
total of purchase returns book. So we had solved a problem on all the subsidiary books at the same time a problem on purchase book as well as purchase returns book. So this is how you are going to solve the problem on subsidiary books but you have to know the format carefully. Other than that all the transactions can be easily recorded as well as calculated. So in my next session, I'm going to solve a problem on sales book as well as sales written book together. That is a problem which contains the transactions of both sales book as well as sales returns book. Next, a problem on cash book. So cash book is an important subsidiary book. So we shall see what is this cash book and how to record the transactions in cash book. So my dear students, hope you have understood today's session. See you all in my next session with a new topic. Till then, take care. Thank you.